Hello everybody and welcome to the Chemistry 121 Supplemental Instruction Video Series. My name is Joey Smokey and today we're going to be talking about Lewis structures, a little bit of an advanced concept. Lewis structures? Yes. Are they structures made of Lewis? Not quite. Uh, They're structures that have been theorized by Lewis. Ah, okay, I gotcha. Yeah. By the way, my name is Kevin Martin. And we'll be presenting this episode for you guys today. Alright, now, Lewis structures, what are they exactly? So, Lewis structures, the whole point of doing a Lewis structure is it's a way to visually show how things bond together. Okay. Okay, so you guys probably remember, you know, you have the electrons, you know, the valence electrons on the outside of an atom, you know, they have the highest energy, they're the ones that are involved in bonding. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Lewis structures basically takes that concept and shows how two things will bond together using their valence electrons. Alright, so it's like a visual aid of sorts. Exactly. Um. So, what Lewis structures do is they use dots to show those valence electrons. So if I have, let's say, carbon, All right. pretty simple, carbon has four valence electrons. Okay. So the way we would show that using Lewis structures is like that. That's carbon. It's got four valence electrons, so we just put a dot for each one of those okay. electrons. Now there's a little bit of a pattern to do this, though. All right. Because you might be thinking, you know, it might be like two on this side and two on that side be the same thing. But you can't do that. Basically what you want to do is make sure there's one dot on each side, as much as you possibly can anyway, All right. before you start pairing them up together. All right. Okay. So if you have something like nitrogen, for example, it's got five in its electrons. So you would show it like this. You have four, then you have the one extra one, so you put them on top. Okay, so you wouldn't put like five electrons by themselves. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And you wouldn't like just pair these two off or whatever. No, you gotta make sure you kind of got it spread out evenly somewhat. All right. Out throughout. There. Okay. So that's just kind of a little technical detail thing. So Lewis structures are pretty cool because what we could do now is why don't I put a hydrogen in here? It's got one dot because it has one valence electron. Yeah, I was wondering when we get to this because these are just atoms. That's right. So. And what we could do is we can combine all these three together using bonds to make cyanic acid. Oh, really? Yes. That's interesting. Would you like to see that? I would like to see that. All right. So when we do that, this is probably look a lot like black magic to you, but it's actually pretty cool. Here, let me go ahead and erase these things, and then we'll go ahead and take it a little bit slower step by step. It's a good thing we're not in 1600 Salem. Yeah. Now, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Where did the dots go? I see all these lines. Okay, so basically what happened is that each of these little lines represents a bond. Okay. And in those bonds is two electrons, two valence electrons. Okay. And since all of these are nonmetals, uh -huh. it's a covalent bond, right? Yeah, right. So, and covalent bonds do sharing of electrons. Right. Okay? So what's going on here is that if we were to draw out their dots like this, remember hydrogen has one. Mm -hmm. Okay, carbon has four. Yeah. Two, three, four. Nitrogen had five. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Just like that. Right. Okay. Now, if we want to bond them together to make the cyanic acid, what we're going to do is each bond. So, so for example, if we have a bond between carbon and nitrogen, it's going to represent two of those electrons. So, if we make one bond, basically we take away those two electrons, okay. and we draw a line to make a bond. All right. So let let me try this thing here. Okay. Trying to get what we got up here. All right. So. Obviously, the hydrogen has to be attached to the carbon. Right, that's so, just what it likes to do. Yeah, and that's pretty easy. I just draw a line like that. Yep. Now, I notice that the carbon and the nitrogen have three different bonds. That's right. Okay. That's called a triple bond, and that's the maximum number of bonds you can have between any two things. So you can't have, like, a quadruple bond with four. Nope, that wouldn't work. Uh, the world would probably fall apart if that happened. Uh, oh, well. Okay, <laughs> so, I guess there's... Two single dots on the carbon and mm -hmm. also two on nitrogen, so I guess I could connect those. Yep. It's gonna look a little weird here. Okay. Yeah, it's not, you know. It's not nice yet. Yeah. So I guess the cleaned up version would be that right there. Exactly. Okay, so yep. th those lines are just, you know, bonds that represent a pair of electrons. Exactly. Okay, so to explain this a little bit further, I'm going to go ahead and erase this for clarity's sake. Okay. And I'm going to draw the cyanic acid just a little bit bigger. Nice. So we have the H, C, the triple bond with the N, two dots there. Okay. Okay. Now, you place those two dots there, does it really matter where they go? 
Um, typically, you're going to want it like this. You're going to want them kind of away from the bond. I mean, oh. you can draw them up there if you want on the top. You know, it's all kind of a matter of preference. Yeah, that's, that's just to make it look nicer, I guess. Exactly. Okay. But what's more important, since you brought these two dots right here, what's that? what that is called is a lone pair of electrons. Okay. Okay? Basically, you have two electrons like that. Now, they're stable like that. If you have two electrons like this, you know, nitrogen's got its three bonds to carbon, so uh -huh. it's good. It's good to have that lone pair like that. It's okay. Okay, so I guess it's a lone pair because it's a pair that's by itself. Right, kind of makes sense. All right. Okay, something else that's going on here right. is that since it's a covalent bond, there's sharing of electrons going on. All right. Now remember, what does every element want to do? It wants to behave like its closest... Noble gas. Exactly. So to do that, it has to complete... An octet. Exactly, which is... Eight. What? Eight what? Electrons. Eight electrons, that's right. So, since every... Thing wants to be have like close to noble gas, have eight electrons and all that. Mm -hmm. What we can do is remember each bond counts as two electrons, right? Okay. Okay. So we look at carbon and we see it has four bonds. Right. Four times two eight. is eight. So it's happy because it's got its eight electrons. Alright. Okay. We look at nitrogen, it has the lone pair, which is two electrons, mm -hmm. plus the three bonds, which is six electrons, mm -hmm. that makes eight. Yep, so it's happy. And then we look at hydrogen. Now hydrogen is a little bit different because remember where it's at on the periodic table? It's on the very tip top. Yep, it's in the little corner up there. So I guess that means no octet. Kind of, it kind of depends. what trying to tell me. Yeah, so hydrogen, I mean, it has sort of kind of fulfilled its octet because it's got two electrons, which, so it's behaving like helium, which is a noble gas. Okay. So it's kind of got its own little weird octet thing. Ah, oh, all right. So It's more of a duet. Sort of, exactly. Right. Okay, so that's cyanic acid, and that's basically what Lewis structures show, is how things bond together and all that. Alright, okay. that's pretty cool. I can see, you know, how it's all put together. Exactly. Alright. That's what Lewis structures are useful for. That is pretty useful. Yeah. Alrighty. All right. I think I'm going to go have some fun with some Lewis structures. You know what? I think I will as well. Alright, you guys should do it too. Alright. <laughs> see you later.